In this video, we will discuss robotic urethral reimplantation at Emory University. Over the past four years, 12 patients have undergone robotic urethral reimplantation. One complication, an enterotomy, was closed intraoperatively. All patients experienced clinical success. 92% of patients showed radiographic success. The case being shown today is a 66-year-old woman who suffered an iatrogenic distal ureteral ligation as shown here by her anti-grade nephrostogram. Patient positioning can be in the low lithotomy position with trocars placed in an umbrella-like fashion similar to robotic prostatectomy, including a 12 millimeter assistant port. Alternatively, patients can be placed in a modified flank position. The ureter is found as it crosses over the iliac vessels. Posterior peritoneal incision is made and the ureter is dissected cranially and caudally. A vessel loop is placed posterior to the ureter to aid in traction. As seen here, with the use of the vessel loop, the surgeon can clearly see the iatrogenic stricture and dissection can be carried down caudally to the area of stricture where the ureter will need to be cut. We then drop the bladder from the anterior abdominal wall in a similar fashion to a robotic prostatectomy. The bladder is grasped and pulled over to the ureter to assure that it reaches prior to cutting the ureter. A partial transection of the ureter is made, after which a silk suture is passed to create a handle for use later in the operation. Ureteral transection is then completed. and the ureter is spatulated for a future anastomosis. We routinely perform a psoas hitch by placing a suture through the psoas tendon and into the bladder. The psoas hitch allows the ureter to be anastomosed in a tension-free environment. We then make a transverse incision with electrocautery on the bladder. The anastomosis is completed with two 4O monocle sutures on RB1 needles tied together. One is dyed and one is undyed. We start out to in on the ureteral mucosa.
At an appropriate point in the anastomosis, we place our ureteral stent. This is done by passing a 14 French angiocath needle into the anterior abdominal wall through which a glide wire is passed. The glide wire is then grasped by the robotic surgeon and passed into the ureter up to the level of the kidney. The ureteral stent is then passed through the anterior abdominal wall through the same stab incision. It is passed over the wire up to the kidney. When it is finally up at the kidney, the wire is removed and the distal curl is then placed into the bladder. Alternatively, the ureteral stent can be placed cystoscopically in a retrograde fashion by the assistant. After the anastomosis is completed and tied securely, a JP drain is passed through the working ports and placed into the pelvis. Postoperative follow-up includes Foley removal with or without a cystogram depending on surgeon at one week, stent removal at four weeks, MAG-3 renal scintigraphy at about three months, and then ultrasounds to follow.